Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another SCP reading. Today we'll be starting off with SCP-98, Surgeon Crabs. Then SCP-99, The Portrait. After that, SCP-100, Jamaican Joe's Junkyard Jubilee. And finally, SCP-101, Hungry Bag. But without further ado, let us begin. Item number, SCP-098, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures Members of SCP-098 are to be kept in a 10 meter by 20 meter room with small pools of water and a sandy substrate. Rocks and driftwood are to be left in a random arrangement for SCP-098 to nest in. The enclosure is to be cleaned on a weekly basis. During this time, all members of SCP-098 are to be accounted for first to prevent injury or death to personnel or SCP-098. Any members of SCP-098 that appear ill or injured are to be removed and examined. Description SCP-098 is a species of previously unknown crustacean. They resemble crabs, but rather than chela, the front limbs terminate in knife-like structures that incorporate silica to form an extremely sharp edge. Specimens reach larger size than normal for land-dwelling arthropods at 40 cm tall and as large as 60 cm across. Specimens of 098 prefer an environment with ready concealment and shallow pools of water. They are able to breathe both water and air, splitting their time between the two environments. They are also capable of vocalizations, using a larynx-like structure attached to primitive lungs. SCP-098 demonstrates pack-hunting behavior when attacking prey. When specimens detect a prey animal, they will attempt to surround it. They will mimic the sounds made by the creature, apparently attempting to confuse it or to draw it into position. When ready, one specimen will approach the prey animal. When its attention is fixed on the first specimen, others will move behind the prey and attempt to cut the tendons of the legs or other limbs. They will continue to mimic the sounds of the prey animal minx to disorient it. After making a cut, a specimen of SCP-098 will spit a viscous mucus over the wound. This substance hardens rapidly, preventing blood loss or infection. This continues until the prey animal is completely immobilized. At this point, specimens will begin to feed on the prey animal by cutting off small pieces of flesh. This begins with soft, readily accessible tissues such as those at the face and extremities, before moving to other parts of the body. Specimens of 098 will only feed so long as the prey animal is capable of respiration. Feeding can last several hours or several days, depending on the size of the prey animal and the number of specimens present. Specimens of SCP-098 show some ability to communicate, alerting each other to the presence of threats or potential food over short distances. It was initially thought that SCP-098 might display human-level intelligence, but are now believed to merely parrot human speech. SCP-098 normally poses little threat to adult humans, preferring smaller prey such as dogs, cats, and small pigs. However, they have attacked larger prey when a sufficient number of specimens were present, or else other food was unavailable. SCP-098 was discovered in redacted Brazil after a rash of child disappearances. Addendum 98-1 SCP-098 is more intelligent than previously thought. They adapt quickly to changes in their environment and have shown an ability to remember patterns such as feeding and cleaning times and habitual movement of personnel entering their enclosure. Cleaning personnel must ensure that they regularly vary their routes through the enclosure to prevent incidents. Dr. Mann has taught several of them simple tricks, and they seem to understand the meaning of several commands. Testing will continue. End of SCP Item number SCP-099 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-099 is kept in a 1 meter by 75 centimeter wall-mounted fireproof case in Gallery 27. Standard climate and humidity controls apply to this section of the gallery. Due to its properties, SCP-099 can only be viewed within the gallery by level 2 staff or higher, and only from a distance greater than 5 meters and for a period not to exceed 5 minutes per day. When not being viewed, the case is to remain shut and electronically locked. Description SCP-099 is a 73 by 50 centimeter painting titled The Portrait. Created in 1935 by surrealist painter René Marguerite, 
The original painting possesses mimetic properties that trigger acute paranoia and lingering psychological effects when viewed for too long or from a distance of approximately three meters or less. The painting depicts a simple still life, with the addition of a single eye staring back at the viewer. A reproduction of the work currently hangs in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The critical elements removed to prevent the paranoia trigger. For a detailed description of the changes, refer to document 099B. Detailed reproductions and photographs of the original work retain its mimetic properties. Those who have viewed the painting for too long or from too close of a distance become subject to the delusion that any being or depiction of a being with eyes is staring at them. In extreme cases, subjects report that inanimate objects are making eye contact. The condition is so severe that subjects will even report making eye contact with individuals whose heads are completely turned away. Depending on the length of the original exposure to the painting, subjects may suffer this condition until death, resulting in severe paranoia and anaclophobia. Addendum. SCP-099 was recovered from the private collection of K. Sage, another surrealist painter. Recovery was performed by MTF Theta-6 Pink Panthers. Miss Sarge was unaware of the recovery and replacement of SCP-099, although pre-recovery investigations suggest she was aware of its properties and was either immune or careful not to look too closely. Marguerite was still alive at the time SCP-099 was stored in Gallery 27. He remains under Foundation surveillance until his death in 1967. Research suggests that the painting's mimetic trigger was intentionally created, although the effect and power of the trigger was likely unintentional. The Foundation has studied the rest of Marguerite's work and found no anomalous mimetic properties to this date. Weaponized Replication Data Expunged End of SCP Item Number SCP-100 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-100 is to have six guards patrolling the interior of the perimeter's fencing and two guards dedicated to the monitoring of the interior and exterior of both warehouses and residential building, with rotations to occur every three hours. Any unauthorized personnel found within SCP-100 are to be detained for questioning prior to a nestic administration and release. Three guards are to remain within the storefront of SCP-100 with rotations to occur every eight hours. The storefront front entrance is to remain locked at all times, with keys provided to necessary personnel. Private property and no trespassing signs are to be posted on the front of the storefront to deter any drivers from stopping at SCP-100. Any constructions SCP-100-1 creates are to be removed from SCP-100 and melted down into slag, with an exception of SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B. Should SCP-100-1 become uncooperative, SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B may be removed from SCP-100 until the time that SCP-100-1 becomes cooperative again. The largest of the two warehouses within SCP-100 have been converted into a basic research facility. All objects created by SCP-100-1, excluding SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B, may be used for research purposes. Testing on SCP-100-1 itself may only be conducted with written permission from the active head researcher. Description SCP-100 is an abandoned scrapyard 80 kilometers from redacted South Carolina, known as Jamaican Joe's Junkyard Jubilee. The scrapyard covers roughly 5,000 square meters of fenced-off land consisting of two warehouses, a storefront, and a small residential building, as well as neglected land and land used for storage. SCP-100 holds roughly 1,500 vehicles, both pressed and unpressed, as well as 1,400 kilograms of separate scrap, estimated to be worth $5,000. SCP-100's anomalous effect manifests through SCP-100-1 and its constructs, including SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B. Autonomy is lost when SCP-100-1 or one of its objects cross the fenced perimeter of SCP-100, remaining in this state until reintroduction. 
SCP-100-1 is an autonomous, sapient, humanoid construct consisting of mostly copper piping, uninsulated copper wiring, and aluminum cans. SCP-100-1 lacks the ability for a written or verbal communication. However, it possesses the ability to communicate using rudimentary sign language. SCP-100-1 is largely uninterested in conversation outside of sales, and information gathered from it has been limited. SCP-100-1 appears to possess skills in craftsmanship, demonstrating the ability to operate tools such as arc welders, drills, and power saws, as well as heavy machinery such as car compressors and forklifts. SCP-100-1 possesses the ability to create autonomous constructs similar to itself, using materials available within SCP-100. SCP-100-1 tends to create four specific animals iguanas, crocodiles, turtles, and flamingos. However, SCP-100-1 has been known to craft other species, such as domestic pets. To maintain compliance, SCP-100-1 has been allowed to keep two objects labeled as SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B. SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B are constructs superficially resembling insects, assumed to be created by SCP-100, as they have occupied SCP-100 since the initial discovery of it. The names Ramon and Beatrice are welded onto the backs of SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B respectively. They appear to operate as both companions as well as guards for SCP-100. As they patrol the perimeter of SCP-100, except during intervals of interaction with SCP-100-1. From 1600 to 2000, SCP-100-1 performs various tasks, including taking stock of material within SCP-100, cleaning and maintaining tools and heavy machinery, and cleaning the interior and exteriors of buildings present within SCP-100. From 2000 to 2000, SCP-100-1 performs what is assumed to be literally acts ranging from creating new constructs, interacting with SCP-100-2-A and 100-2-B, and patrolling SCP-100. From 0800 to 0800, SCP-100-1 enters the residential building, where it remains seated at a desk for the duration of this time. In the event that a human enters the storefront of SCP-100 during the interval of time SCP-100-1 is seated behind the counter, SCP-100-1 will attempt to bargain with them using a variety of gestures to convey meanings. Most attempts by SCP-100-1 are to sell scrap, figures of its own creation, or repair services. However, it has been known to purchase scrap. Despite SCP-100-1's inability to read, it possesses the ability to perform basic mathematics as demonstrated by sales. Sales made by SCP-100-1 are typically met with some degree of unfairness. SCP-100-1 has been known to intentionally use faulty scales and contaminate scrap piles with cheaper metals, and has demonstrated knowledge of the air effect within SCP-100, as SCP-100-1 has sold constructs repeatedly despite the loss of autonomy when exiting SCP-100. Efforts to confront SCP-100-1 about this have been met with both distress and indifference, with referral to a sign posted on the wall reading, no refunds, Mon, happening regardless of SCP-100-1's emotional response. SCP-100 was discovered on 11-09-76 following reports of strange machines operating from within the scrapyard. These rumors were discredited as urban legends, and a Foundation agent was sent to SCP-100 to act as the landowner until containment was performed under the guise of property sale. A wooden privacy fence was built along the former perimeter of SCP-100, one-way windows were installed in the storefront, and a highway now running through the nearby town of Redacted redirects the majority of civilian traffic. Addendum 100-A Records show the property is owned by one Joseph Duval, with the mailing address sharing the same name. Local utility companies report billing had stopped approximately three months before the discovery of SCP-100, which was found abandoned save for SCP-100-1, SCP-100-2-A, and 100-2-B, and several avian and canine figures presumed to be made by SCP-100-1. The initial sweep of the buildings revealed the residential building to be mostly bare, 
with the only sign of former occupants being a note found taped to the door of the storefront. See document 100-A. Incident 100-A. On 6-3-5, SCP-100-1 created a humanoid autonomous construct 10 centimeters in height. The first time SCP-100-1 has done so. Significant effort was put into this construct compared to others, with greater detail applied to the construct including facial features and JJ welded into the back of the construct and stainless steel making up the majority of the construct. SCP-100-1 placed the construct on the counter of the storefront for the duration of this scheduled interview, both using vague gestures to seemingly communicate with one another. Following the confiscation of this construct, SCP-100-1 remained seated within the residential building of SCP-100 for a total of 10 days. Document 100-A. The following is a copy of the note recovered upon discovery of SCP-100. Out to lunch. Please see assistant. J.J. End of SCP. Item number. SCP-101, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-101 is currently stored in the sub-basement 0-2 of Site-19, inside of a standard fireproof document lockbox within a reinforced concrete room of standard facility size. Said room has been fitted externally with a standard double-door airlock and internally fitted with appropriate safety response equipment as well as biological response equipment. Only personnel of level 3 are permitted to enter the SCP-101 holding room. Personnel of level 2 or lower are permitted to interact with SCP-101 only with directives from level 3 or higher personnel or with standing directives. The airlock for SCP-101 is set to a standard 10-minute cycle, during which standard screening scans for biological or environmental hazards will be made. SCP-101 is under standing directives for use during 0600 and 2000 hours. Outside of the airlock of the holding room for SCP-101, two level 2 guards are to be posted at all times with overlapping shifts. Description SCP-101 appears as a satchel or bag of intermittent size, with observations ranging from an opening of 15 cm in diameter to 70 cm in diameter. The depth of the container has varied with no standard mean of equality to the relative diameter. The primary feature of SCP-101 is what appears to be a semi-humanoid mouth contained within the opening of the bag, with a mean standard of 31 cm of depth into the container without more than two standard deviations of variance regardless of the apparent external depth of the container. The mouth consists of 32 teeth of an off-white hue, all of equal shape and size consisting solely of incisors of approximately 10 centimeters in length. It has been observed, albeit not measured from accuracy, that within the mouth there is a tongue of indeterminate length with observations ranging from 50 centimeters to 3.5 meters. The mouth appears wet and spongy, however all attempts at removal of possible fluids have resulted in failure with damage to the instruments and harm to personnel. The current decision is that SCP-101 may be a part of a larger entity of extra-dimensional origin. SCP-101 is not externally mobile, however internal movements within the container can affect minor movements of the exterior of the container that consists of SCP-101's covering. It is understood that due to the nature of the size improbabilities of the container and object within, the object is of extra-dimensional interaction, if not origin. SCP-101 has exhibited polymorphic abilities as well as a low level of sentience. The photo on file depicts the item as it was discovered in 1979 in the remote area of the Cascade Mountains in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Found along with SCP-101 was the decaying remains of a human clad in a weathered black suit, seated upon an also weathered parachute missing the right arm up to the joint of the shoulder which appears to have bite marks through the remaining bones assumed to be inflicted by SCP-101. 
Speculations as to the identity of this deceased individual has led researchers to the conclusion that this was the one D.B. Cooper, remains removed for the purposes of concealing the existence of SCP-101. SCP-101 has changed appearance and shape with the apparent end of enticing subjects into reaching within the container. These appearances have ranged from money satchels to daily boxes to crispy cream containers to candy bags, all of which have had an external appearance that is indistinguishable from that of the real containers. It has been proposed by Dr. Redacted that SCP-101 is semi-sentient in its attempts to lure subjects in. At the recommendation of Data Expunged, SCP-101 is currently in use as a means of refuse disposal for Site-19. SCP-101 has not shown adverse reaction to having foreign matter introduced it to it, including, but not limited to, paper product, sewage, cafeteria refuse, metals, polymers, oils, and other products which are not consumable by any known biological entity. Addendum 1. So far, SCP-101 has not exhibited any abnormal behaviors from the standards observed, nor has SCP-101 admitted any substances either foreign, extra-dimensional, or abnormal. However, it is the concern of Dr. Redacted that SCP-101 may produce an emission in the future. Addendum 2. Further examination under the direction of Dr. Redacted has determined that SCP-101 is ideal for the disposal of hazardous wastes and byproducts of other SCP-related objects. Dr. Redacted is noted as being opposed to this measure, however, O5 blank has given authorization for the project to continue. Thank you, everyone, for coming. It's an absolute joy being able to read to you all, and. I hope that you have a wonderful time out there in the future. Good luck, and I hope to see you again.